He reports that Romelu Lukaku is going to be out for Inter, uh, most definitely against Parma, very possibly their next Champions League against Real Madrid, which is a game I know you are calling. Uh, how big mm. a loss, how big an impact might this be for Inter? It's a massive blow because Antonio Conte, the way he plays, he wants his centre forward to be the, 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 the focal point of all the attacks. Yes, he plays with another striker up there, but it's Romelu Lukaku that's the, that focal point. They get the ball into him quickly. The whole point of their midfield spreading and they play it out from the back is so they can get it into him and then they play off there. And he's been good enough over the last year to not only receive the ball and bring others into play, he's been good enough to turn and run past defenders and score goals himself. So I think that link-up play between the two front players is never quite as good when Lukaku's not playing. So I think it's a massive blow for Antonio Conte and Inter, not just in, the, in Serie A, but in the Champions League as well. Yeah, and Nicky, in the context of that Champions League group, this is a massive game immediately, isn't it? Both of them off to really uh, dodgy starts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know who comes into this feeling worse about how they've started, to be honest with you. I feel like Inter shouldn't feel great about things, but look, they didn't lose at home, at least, which Madrid have already done. I, I, Lukaku's a huge, he's a huge loss. You can't overstate it. I think he's been carrying Inter so far this season. I think he carried them in certain games late last season. At their best, this Inter team under Conte had a beautiful dynamic between Lukaku and Lautaro. But Lautaro is not in a good, I don't think he's in a good headspace at the moment. I talked about this on the Serie A Awesome podcast. He's, he's out of form on the pitch, but I think if you watch the way he reacted to being substituted against Genoa, throwing a real tantrum about it. I think there's ways that can happen that make you think, good, okay, this player is serious and he's frustrated and he's going to work to get better. I just thought he looked like a kid who was throwing his toys out of the pram and I'm really concerned about where his mindset is because right now with, with um, Lukaku out, Lautaro has to step up. A lot of pressure, Mina, on Inter on Tuesday. Yeah, I think so, considering their, their results have been rather disappointing in the Champions League. But I think that Antonio Conte can really use this opportunity to actually try and introduce something different because... I mean, I think that it was this was explained by Munchen Gladbach and some of their players after they, they played against uh, against Inter. And they said, you know, the tactic is that they look for Lukaku. And that was what we tried to do, was we would try to starve him of, of the ball and, and try to stop him as much as possible. And I think that's what the blueprint has been when you try to stop Inter going forward, is you focus a lot on Lukaku because he is the man that they will look to. They will deliver crosses to him. They will try to play him in. And he works so hard for that team. But I think this is an opportunity to try to make things less reliant, to try to make it a little bit more unpredictable. So perhaps let's introduce a different style of play, maybe make it a little bit more unpredictable through the middle. Um, I don't know who he Conte is going to try to put up there, but Lautaro Martinez, I agree with Nikki, is in a bad place. But I think there needs to be a way of trying to find different styles of getting into the in, into the ball into the net rather than always looking for Lukaku, always delivering a pass there. Of course, Barelli is going to suffer because they have this great chemistry on the pitch. And really, Antonio Conte needs the points because if he wants Inter to continue buying these wonderful players, he needs to do well in Europe. That pays him the big bucks. Uh, I want to get all of your thoughts. I'll start with you, Robbo, on uh, what was uh, an insanely entertaining game uh, for, for plenty of right reasons and plenty of wrong reasons to Milan and Roma. That 3 free draw. Of course, the headlines with, with, with the two penalties uh, awarded. Uh, mm. Soft doesn't even begin to describe them, uh, Robbo. The referee and the VAR official involved in that game, uh, Giacomelli is the referee, have actually been suspended for two games. What, what did you make of, uh, of what occurred? Well, obviously, you know, I don't think they were the right decisions. Uh, they were soft penalties. One of them should have been a free kick the other way. Uh, then the VAR <laughs> had the, the right to overturn it and ask the referee to go and have a look at it on the side. Obviously, he didn't think the referee had made a clear and obvious error. Suspending them, I don't think, helps. It, it's obvious to me that the VAR doesn't understand... Or he, if he understands the laws, he doesn't understand football in, 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 the, in general terms. He doesn't understand what was a foul and what wasn't a foul. Who's trying to shield the ball and who's making the tackle? That's the problem. One player was trying to shield the ball and he got penalised when the other player was making the tackle. And just suspending them, I don't think it helps their referee. It doesn't help their understanding of the game. They're going to be sat down and talked to, uh, talk to and get them to understand exactly what the laws of the game are and understand football in general. Yeah, Nikki and Mina, you talked about it on the Serie A Awesome podcast. Does it make any more sense a couple of days later? 
No, I mean, I was laughing at Robbo there, but he's right. Um, what happened with Pedro and Ben Acer on the first penalty was, it was incomprehensible. <laughs> it was a foul by Pedro, and not even a little foul. It was sort of studs into the ankle foul. It was, I just, whatever happened with Giacomelli in the initial decision, I appreciate that a referee on a pitch might, for whatever reason, not see something clearly. NASCAR, the fourth uh, official looking at the monitor, I don't, I just don't understand exactly as Robbo said, what comprehension of the rules you have where you don't see that as a foul by Pedro, because it's it's a glaring foul. And it's a shame because actually it was a hugely, hugely entertaining game of football. Still wound up being an entertaining game of football, but I think it, it got cost something because of that first penalty and then what felt like a makeup penalty at the other end. Mm. And Mina, so a two game suspension is actually going to be a month because of the international break that comes at the end of it. Uh, do you think that's fitting? I think so. I think that it is a case of, you know, you performed badly, so you will get your punishment and you have to serve that. And I think that is a stain on their reputation and perhaps a warning threat to everyone else to, to try to do a better job. There needs to obviously be adjustments because so many European leagues are obviously complaining about VAR and the way that things are being handled by the referees. Um, there is this case of sometimes one wonders whether the referee is sort of taking a back seat because he knows VAR will correct his mistakes. Of course, that didn't happen this time around. And that is the true fear of everything that's going to happen. But at least, you know, if we'd want to be positive about this, there was a makeup penalty. So it was all fair in the end. Everyone got a penalty each if you know was wrong. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.